All right, so I'm here with Jessica Willis, CEO of the Richmond Justice Initiative. And uh, thanks for taking the time, Jessica. I really love what you guys do, and I'm excited for this conversation. It's neat to be sort of distanced, but in this conversation with you. Yeah, Starden, thank you. I'm looking for the conversation too, and really thankful for Needle's Eye Ministry and the mission and all you all do. So great work that you all are doing. Yeah, well, there's a lot of kingdom work to do in our city, right? And it's neat to be able to help each other out a little bit or just know what the other person's doing and the other ministry is doing. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself briefly for people who don't know you and explain what Richmond Justice Initiative is and does? Yes, so I'm Jessica Willis, and um, like Jordan said, I serve as the CEO of RJI or Richmond Justice Initiative. We're a nonprofit organization committed to preventing and ending human trafficking locally and throughout the U.S. Uh, human trafficking is happening across the globe in the United States and right here in Richmond. And so one of the things that we know and believe is that human trafficking can be prevented. And I think one of the biggest things that um, of hope is that we can all make a difference to make that happen. Our mission is to educate, equip, and mobilize communities with the tools needed to be a force in the movement to end human trafficking. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we work locally and nationally in 13 states now with our Prevention Project Program. That is a nationally award-winning program that educates at-risk youth, middle school, high school. And we, it's also been used in college programs on how to protect themselves and others on the lures of trafficking. Wow. So this might be a little bit of a right turn from what you just said, because I really want to get into RJI and uh, its valuable and biblical mission. But uh, when we talked a couple of weeks ago, you were telling me how Needle's Eye actually had a big part in your story at a particular time in your growth in the Lord. Do you want to, do you mind talking about that for a little bit? Yes. I am so thankful for Needles Eye Ministries. I was a part of the Young Professionals Group, YPG, back I think in 2011, and it was life-changing. Mm. Uh, we had a wonderful group, and it was led by JC Cancellari and Lisa Ratner, and we just had so many meaningful conversations around the table as a group, but also uh, Lisa and I just had some really great one-on-ones that were impactful and just such a blessing. JC shared with the group wonderful analogies that really shifted my perspective on forgiveness, on how to find your spouse. <laughs> um, and at one point, we were sitting there at the table as a group and JC said something to me. He just slipped across the table really calmly and he said, Jessica, I feel like the spirit is telling me you're gonna lead up an organization someday. And for me in that moment, that was because, um, you know, I was in the middle of searching for what the Lord was calling me to. And, you know, now I'm entering my fifth year of CEO at RJI, and it's an honor to be able to serve there. Um, but I remember right before I was being called to that role, um, I saw JC and I said, do you remember that conversation? This is about to happen. And really the way forward was really just seeking God the whole time and, um, you know, not seeking a specific result, but seeking the Lord and say, Lord, guide me where you want me to go. Mm -hmm. So yes, Needle's Eye is real, has been really impactful to me and I'm really thankful for you all. So that's a, going back to RJI for a minute. We're all social distance now and everybody's online and most people aren't in their offices. Um, as somebody who doesn't work in that field, even though I think it's incredibly important, my perception would be maybe COVID-19 has slowed down trafficking because that's, or, or has that not changed at all? Has it increased? What does that look like now? And what can people do either, you know, from their office or from their home to kind of help fight against it or protect themselves and others? That's a great question. COVID-19 has not slowed down human trafficking. It has just transformed it a bit. And in fact, one portion of human trafficking has really increased. Uh, and I could talk about this for a while, but one of the things that I want to share that I think is really important during this time of COVID-19 is traffickers are always online. Hmm. 
and they use online as a recruiting tool, no matter COVID or not. And so it is imperative that kids, people know how to protect themselves online because traffickers want to come across as kind, trustworthy, alluring, and they want to gain people's trust and they may present themselves as someone that they're not. And all of that is to lure people into trafficking. And so it is vital that people know how to protect themselves online. And so we have provided some simple resources to help you and your loved ones stay safe online. You can visit our website at rbaji.com and it's on the front page. You can click to learn more about COVID-19 and human trafficking and then there's a link on online safety. And that's on your phone, on your computer, no matter what, because we're all online so much more and we need to protect ourselves now and all the time. Um, the other thing, um, if people want to get involved, we at RJI had to pivot and we had to cancel our in-person fundraising event, which was supposed to happen April 2nd. But it's such an important event because it helps majorly fund our programs to effectively prevent trafficking. And so by, by having that canceled, we have reframed that to have a virtual event at the end of this month, May 28th through the 30th. And you all are invited, please attend, please share with your friends and go online to our website again, rbaji.com for more information and to make a donation because your donation will make a direct life saving difference in the lives of at-risk youth. Um, I've seen it over and over and over again in testimony. And so, you know, you all can be a part of that through making that happen. So it's not like you said the virtual event is over a couple days. So yes. it's not, you know, sign on at 7 p.m. on one day and watch a live stream. What will that kind of look like for people to know? Yes. Yeah, so on May 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to have a really inspiring lineup of speakers to share about um, human trafficking, but most importantly, how everyone can make a difference mm. to prevent and end it. It really takes all of us. And so we wanna share impactful stories of prevention and some really inspiring things that have happened in the lives of some students. And you may also hear from a survivor, and so who's one of our dear partners. So please tune in. It'll be an, about an hour long on May 28th at 6 p.m. EST. And then throughout the next few days, we'll have some encouraging posts as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, really hope everyone can join. Yeah. That sounds phenomenal. Uh, so once we sign off, literally, that's going in my calendar. Uh, but it sounds like for somebody who wants to learn more about the work you all are doing in human trafficking and be encouraged by the work God is doing through you, that's a great opportunity. Even if they're like, well, I don't know if I'm going to give or in a place to give, they could do that and then see if the Lord would then call them through that to, to give or just to prayerfully support what you all are doing. Absolutely, Jordan. Yeah. Prayer is the most important thing we can do to end human trafficking. God's heart beats so strong for those who are oppressed yeah. and for the captives to be set free and you know preventing human trafficking preventing before people are in captivity wow um that that's that's an amazing way that people can get involved yeah. and so yes prayer is the biggest thing and there's volunteer opportunities and many ways to get involved for however you feel called to that's great. So it's, well, it's awful. I wish we didn't have to do that, but it's great that you all are doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so Needles as a ministry to the marketplace. And when we've talked before, you were telling me that the marketplace and kind of individual workplaces are really the main conduit for trafficking or one of the main conduits. How does that, I imagine you could talk for hours on that, right? Mm -hmm. But kind of how does that work? And what's somebody, when we're all back in our offices, whenever that happens, What's, uh, what are things people can be aware of or pay attention to or even pray about to kind of combat that um, when we're not primarily online? That's certainly a big topic and uh, definitely an area of passion I love talking about. Um, 
So I think the biggest thing is awareness. Hmm. Nothing can happen until we are all aware. And so just, first of all, just educate yourself about the issue, uh, you know, attend on May 28th, learn more. And um, one of the big pieces that I always emphasize is yes, this is a really hard issue. It's a dark issue, but we serve the God of light. We serve the God of freedom. Yeah. and um, of hope. And so that's, that's how we choose to look at this and that change is possible and that God does have that desire to set the captives free. And so um, with that, um, there's so much that each of us can do. Talking about the workplace, businesses themselves can partner with us um, in multiple ways, either through sponsoring events like the Benefit for Freedom. We love partnering with different businesses um, that want to promote good missions. Um, the second is, uh, believe it or not, um, you could be preventing trafficking right in your coffee break room. Um, coffee is one of the top um, resources that is made by forced labor. And so by switching over your coffee, your tea, your chocolate, these are three of my favorite things. <laughs> and when I found out early on, that these things and so many other things are made by forced labor, by human trafficking, um, people forced into human trafficking. I, I wanted to find a way that I could promote the opposite, promote mm -hmm. um, and support businesses that were doing the right thing by treating and paying people fairly. And so a really easy way to do that is through buying fair trade products yes. um, that guarantee among other things that there was no forced labor, there was no child labor used in the production of the products. And so those are some quick ways. Um, and then I think just with kids, we wanna reach all youth with how to protect themselves. You know, you want to reach kids before they need mm -hmm. um, protection. And so and they need protection throughout um, their young lives and into adulthood. And so, um, so partner with us to bring the prevention project program to your schools in your area. That's an amazing way to make a difference. That's great. Yeah. yeah I, so I'm a big coffee drinker and I have found, maybe you have found this too. I, I have found that fair trade coffee is a higher quality coffee. <laughs> than the other maybe it costs a little, a little bit more, not much, but it just, it tends to be better. So um, it's worth doing if it benefits us in no way, but often we get like a higher quality chocolate or coffee or something. Um, and we're supporting things that the Lord cares about, which is obviously yes. more important than that. Um, okay, last question. We're going to kind of zoom in on COVID-19 and, and what this has been like. So um, you're a CEO, you're a wife, you're a mom, you're a follower of Jesus, you probably wear 10 other hats, you're a leader. Um, what is the Lord teaching you in this time? And you don't have to hit all of those topics, you can, but yeah, how's the Lord using this time to shape you as you, you know, with your family, by yourself, with your team, all that kind of stuff? You know, I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, when I was at Needle's Eye, you know, taking the young professionals group uh, session, I was searching for the Lord um, in really meaningful ways. And as a part of that, and through the different things that I've gone through with the Lord, he has proven so trustworthy, so good. God is our provider. These are not just words in the Bible. These are promises about God's character. And I've had the chance to, um, to really know the Lord through my experiences by searching for him. And he has, like I said, proven himself so faithful. And in my personal life at RJI, God just provides so abundantly and beautifully. And we have had to trust him for some really big things. And this example of the pandemic and, you know, our benefit in person being canceled and having to move that online, that's another huge area that our faith is growing because we don't know the result. And we know that if 
when people give, um, that there will be a tremendous result and lives being changed, but we don't know that yet. And so we're praying for a good result there. But I think this has really been a time, Jordan, of remembrance mm -hmm. that God has proven himself faithful and has gotten me through past times of turmoil. And so I can recall his provision. I can recall his character and I can choose to trust him now um, because God's promises are true today. Mm -hmm. They're true no matter my circumstances and I can fully rely on him and his character to bring us through. And so in a sense, it doesn't change what's happening, mm -hmm. right? but it changes my perspective. It brings some calmness to my spirit that just the knowledge that, and the experience that God is good. He is yeah, faithful. Amen. He will provide because that's who he is. And the, the biggest thing that we can do, and this is so important, is to position ourselves in his loving arms and to trust him fully and say, I don't understand, but I trust you and you are trustworthy no matter what. And there is a harvest to be gained when we do that with our lives. And we're not, we may not see it the next day, um, but it cultivates such a sweet relationship with the Lord. And so, um, so it's really been a season of reminding myself, my team, about his past, current, and future provision. God will provide. He is good. And we don't know how, but he will. And resting in that glorifies him. And that's the most important thing, right? Well, amen. I mean, I don't think I can say it better than that. I, I'm 100% with you. I've been reflecting a lot on Psalm 77 the mm -hmm. last few weeks, where the psalmist essentially does exactly what you said. He says, where are you, God? When are you going to help us out? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm going to remember who God is, and I'm going to remember what he's done, and, and he kind of goes through the exact process. So that that's beautiful, and I think um, that's a great way to end. Uh, we can all try to remember who the Lord's character is because the Lord doesn't change. The world changes. Right. He doesn't change. And he knew this was coming and he knows the end results for every one of 7 billion people and the whole world itself. Mm -hmm. um, this is not out of his control. Well, thank you, Jessica. This is great. And uh, rvaji.com. Is that That's right? right? All right. So yeah. hopefully we'll see you, a lot of us, on May 28th. And thanks for doing this. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Jordan. Really appreciate you. Have yeah, fun. and thank you all. If you watch to the end, we really appreciate it. And uh, may God uh, continue to use RJI and Needle's Eye in his service. Mm -hmm. And would we never deviate from the work that he has for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks, Jessica. Thank you, Jordan.